through it, Leith Fata. Ever since I've known Zaid, he's just always been so passionate about the snack shack. I mean, come on, look at the kid. Looks like a walking honey bun, and he's got enough calories on him to feed an entire village back home. Nevertheless, the snack shack has undoubtedly served students by the generations as an important fueling station. Zaid has taken the necessary step of developing a new platform to elevate the whole snack shack experience and to give it the update it so much deserves. And here to talk to you more about it is my brother, Zaid, the biggest snack of all. I would like to believe most of us have gone through this come break time. You go to the snack shack to order a usual snack, but you see a long line, honestly, aren't quite sure why. As you get closer to your turn, you notice this long line is due to the new, new students running the snack shack. And they have no idea how to use last year's system. The system was confusing to use, to say the least. Uh, it was unnecessarily ambiguous with snack types such as large and small snack, uh, would uh, crash repeatedly due to its computer's old hardware. After having heard constant complaints from the people who use the system the most, Roland Neal and I set out to change the program in hopes of making uh, the lives of the vendors a little bit easier. Because even though break time is supposed to be a time to relax, uh, the vendors behind the snack shack never had that opportunity. Uh, from my understanding, the conversation with friends that work there and Mr. Balderas, I heard the same response frequently. It's hard to use, lacks functionality, and crashes frequently. After a deeper inspection and use of the application, I noticed they're right. Last year's program was not user friendly and it was especially difficult for new vendors to use, hence the long lines when freshmen were running the snack shack. By simplifying the user interface and adding features requested by Mr. Bladeris and Co., Roland and I hope the new program will be easy to use and very functional. Uh, for, oh, the first person of the procedure is the planning process. Part of the planning process was to discuss whether we wanted to proceed with a desktop application like last year's system or a web application. To keep it brief, we opted for web application. We did this because a website would depend less on the hardware of the system, which is an important advantage to note because last year's uh, application would crash so frequently due to the insufficient hardware. Uh, next, it's easier to update and edit a web application from anywhere. And as it is not locally downloaded to the computer, allowing Roland and I to make changes from whatever college we're at next year. Lastly, Seen as the website has more than one developer working on it, using a web application allows us the simplicity of cross-platform programming. As Roland uses a MacBook and I use a Windows computer. Uh, next, Roland and I need to, needed to decide how to split up the application. To better understand how a website functions, there are three crucial parts. The front end, the back end, and the database. Due to my interest in the graphical element of a website, I opted to work on the front end and due to this connection with the back end, work on the back end as well. This left Roland the task of working on the database. Step two, the procedures prototyping. Uh, to begin, Roland and I met with Mr. Valderas, Mr. DeMoss, Mrs. Hamlin, and Ms. Bagliani over the summer to discuss the issues with the old system and what features they would like to see added, uh, such as a Sam's Club shopping list generator requested by Mr. Valderas. To allow for more input, Roland also asked a few members of the SCA what features they'd like to see added as well. Uh, and the project was underway. Uh, as a front-end developer, my main priority is the look and feel of the application. So I worked on a, on a prototype using something called Adobe XD. I would use this prototype to base my blueprint of the website. And as you'll hear from any teacher around the school, uh, planning and having a better a visual picture of what you want to do is very important because it allows you, um, as it allows you to have a goal of what you want to do and work towards that goal. Uh, and here's a brief demonstration of what I had designed in early June of the year. And to briefly explain what's going on here, I'm just typing in role, like the ID, which is Roland's name, click next. And here you'd see the brief ID of what it looked like with all the, it's kind of blurry, but you can see that items, talkies and water. You see the card in the bottom left corner, there's a checkout button and the analytics page to show you the inventory of how much stock was left after each purchase. Uh, step three, the procedure is the front end. Uh, now to really delve into 
Now to really delve into web development, let's begin with an explanation of the front end. The front end is simple to understand. It's everything a user can see and interact with on a website. Uh, I developed the front end using a very pow powerful uh, framework known as Angular. The reason I used Angular is because it is a coherent ecosystem for the development of the website using HTML, CSS, and TypeScript, along with ways in which to deploy the website and test the website effectively. With this deeper inspection of the front end, three new terms have been mentioned, HTML, CSS, and TypeScript. Uh, HTML or hypertext language is a programming language that can be best described as the images and text we see on a page. It's the content that fills each page and, um, and the website. It has many capabilities. Uh, for example, having text boxes, it, having text boxes, adding tables, uh, images, and even videos. However, if all websites were done via only the use of HTML, they'd be boring. They'd be nothing more than a Word document using a basic font such as Times New Roman. And as you can see here, this is the basic layout of the website without with using only HTML. And when you look at this, you can tell why it would not be pleasant to use and why you need to add style to it to make it usable. And uh, the style elegance of website comes with HTML's partnership with CSS, otherwise known as cascading style sheets. The, the image you're looking at right now is, believe it or not, the same exact HTML code from the last slide. However, I added CSS. CSS and HTML have a relationship in which you can add tags to an HTML code segment, and you can style that entire code segment by referring to that tag using a CSS. For example, I tagged the title, the Snack Shack title. And with that, I jumped into my CS code, CSS code and can add a different font, different size, change however I would like to make it more appealing. Or another example here is the buttons. As you can see on the left side and the bottom left side right there, you can see the buttons from the last slide from using the only HTML slide. And you can see that the buttons aren't necessarily very interesting. And uh, if they were a color, you could say they, they're beige. They're not very interesting at all. And so in my CSS code, I added a tag for the buttons called button.analytics, as you can see in the red box right there. And added appropriate styling I would like. For example, I changed the color to this reddish font. I placed it in the bottom right corner of the screen and so on. And now with the use of both HTML and CSS, uh, we have unlocked a more advanced Word document per se, uh, with the ability to add colors, fonts, and even change sizes of different items. However, even though we have a visually appealing website, uh, it's the lack of interactiveness and the ability for a user to really connect with the website. Uh, no fear, however, this is uh, no we no fear, however, this is added by the use of TypeScript. TypeScript, similar to its more famous big brother, JavaScript, is a scripting language used for uh, web development. Many many of you all may have heard of JavaScript. It allows for the user to make changes and interact with the front end and send these changes to the back end. Uh, where it can be processed. The big issue for many people with learning JavaScript is that it uh, is not organized. So what makes TypeScript so important and so helpful is in its name. It allows for strong typing. And typing, for those who do not know, is just a way to get, um, basically uh, give a type for each variable. For example, an, a word would be a string, a number would be an integer. So it keeps, gives you a way to organize that. And with my experience of using Java, uh, it made learning this new language much more digestible as Java has, does, does the same thing. And here we can see the same website again with the appropriate TypeScript code added to make the button click, uh, go to the next page and show the uh, buying page. Let me show you for that. Step four, the procedure is the back end. Uh, the back end can be considered the middle uh, as it connects the uh, front end to the database. A brief explanation of how the back end works is seen in the image right here. Uh, when I enter something on the front end, uh, which is the website, a call is then sent from the front end to the back end, whose main priority is to process this operation and to then send this to the database, uh, whose, main, uh, whose main responsibility is to get this information and send it back to the front end. I understand this might be confusing and the main issue, the big issue with uh, understanding the back end is that we as a user of the website cannot visually see what's going on, making how it works and what it does a little confusing to understand. However, I hope with some more explanation, it can make more sense. Uh, my, my back end was written in Java and can be segmented into three main parts, entities, uh, controllers, and exceptions. Uh, an entity is a fancy word for an object. It, which is just a blueprint of a physical item that is needed in this application. 
Um, for example, I have an item box entity, uh, which represents a snack item, and this entity has instance variables which make it different from others. Uh, for example, every snack has an item. Every snack item box has a name, a price, a quantity, a max quantity, and a type. Uh, to make this clear, let's imagine a bag of salt and uh, salt and vinegar lace chips. Uh, this bag, this bag of chips is represented by this item box entity and has a name of Lay's salt and vinegar. Uh, it has a price of $1 and has a quantity of, let's say, 15. However, it had a max quantity of 20. And obviously, it's a bag of chips, so its type is snack. Uh, and this should be simple to understand. And here's an image that I'm showing you all that in purple. Uh, next slide. Oh, sorry. Each entity has its own controller. A controller is a much more abstract idea uh, and is honestly difficult to understand. However, it's crucial to try to get a comprehension of what it does. Uh, let's jump back a bit to the front end. In the front end, I reference these entities with the same name, meaning there's a class called uh, item box in both the front end and in the back end. In the front end, the TypeScript code gives it all the functionality we would expect, such as the ability to add it to cart, change its name, and do have whatever we would like to do with it. And and when the, where the controller in the back end matters here is uh, a controller controls the flow of information between the back end and the front end. For example, I have images here. Uh, the top one is from the front end and the bottom from the back end. Uh, here in the front end, we want to show all the item boxes available using a method simply called get items highlighted in red. Uh, and now in the bottom picture, we see another code segment called list item boxes, meaning list the snacks. When the, when the call is made in the front end, uh, meaning the top image, uh, the back end receives this call due to the change in the URL you can see right there, which ends in item boxes, uh, and proceeds to run the code in the method and to make all the items available in the database to be seen. And again, I understand this might be confusing and I apologize. However, this will be a lot easier to understand. And finally, we have exceptions, uh, which are simply just loops. Uh, to ensure no errors occur, and if they do, the proper steps are taken to make sure uh, the user is aware of them uh, and to prompt a clear error message. Here I have another example. And for all intents and purposes, we do not have a user with the ID of four. And so our error box at the bottom right there, highlighted in red, um, makes that clear to us and tells us that the user is not found. Thus notifying us to use a different ID that is available. Uh, the bottom image here is just a brief overview, overview of some of the exceptions I have in my code, ranging from not enough items, meaning the amount of items we're attempting to purchase is greater than what we have available, and simply that a uh, item does not exist. Uh, step five of the procedure is the database. Uh, the database isn't quite ready yet, nor is it my specialty in this application. Uh, however, I believe it's important to briefly understand what it is. A database is an organized set of data in a web application that can be accessed and modified due to operations from the front and back end. It is similar to a file cabinet. Uh, it stores all the information and data we need. And in this application, it will be the place where we can store all students information uh, regarding purchases. It will also be the place where we store the inventory digitally with references, references to the items, their prices and their quantity. Uh, it is being created by Roland Neal using SQL or structured query language. And I'll leave that to him to explain that better during his presentation. And finally, step six involves connecting the front end and the back end and debugging issues along the way. Uh, as I handed that briefly in the controller explanation, the front and back end are connected through something called request methods. Uh, request methods are basically changed in the URL performed by clicking buttons on the front end uh, for example, adding an item to a cart, and then the back end spots the change in the URL and performs the appropriate task according to this change. Uh, this can be seen in the controllers once again, and as we can see here in the front end code above, uh, there's a function called http.getItemBox, meaning this is a getter request method, which simply will get and list out all the items. Uh, and, we, and we know, if, so let's imagine someone wants to purchase something from the snack shack. Uh, let's say they want to purchase a bag of Skittles. Uh, as the vendor, I would click on the Skittles item box and a request, a request method would send out a, great, a getter message to the back end, which will request more information from the database regarding the, regarding the bag of Skittles, for example, the quantity and price of the item. Uh, and with the step of integrating the front and back end, plenty of errors appeared. And this was actually the final step of the project, which is debugging. 
uh, as it entails ensuring that everything works as uh, expected and the website is as efficient uh, and effective as we would like it to be and hopefully ready to push to the public soon. And what the application looks like now. As you can see here, we start off by typing in the student ID, simply just two, we click next. And here we see, oh, it's a little blurred, but here we see all of the items we wanna purchase. For example, Takis, Lays, uh, Water, and Gatorade. In the bottom left in the correct section, you can see all the items listed with their quantities and price. And you can remove any item by clicking X, which is requested by uh, Mr. Valeris, I believe. And you can, keep, you can add more items if you'd like after that. And you see a total price in the bottom left corner. You can check out and then go to the analytics page, which is just a fancy word for inventory, where you can see all of the items in their uh, quantities after each purchase. And here you can also add new items. For example, KitKat, let's say, you can type that in. You can add the price of the item uh, and the quantity you'd like to see added. And with this, we also have a Sam's Club shopping list generated to the left to uh, make a list of all the items that need, we need to refill the snack shack. And, and there's also a refill button. So after we make those purchases, we can see that the quantities are currently are low. If you click refill, it'll max out all the items again, which again, you can't see, but it's the case. And if you go back to student ID, actually you can, you can see that the KitKat item box has appeared there. Um, what I learned, I hope this, uh, I hope this program will allow other, oh, sorry, uh, with my initial plan uh, be, being to design and develop a desktop application, uh, not a website, I was pleasantly surprised by the intricacy, difficulty, and capabilities of web application. I believe we have become accustomed to the belief that web applications are simple to make due to websites such as Squarespace and WordPress that allow us to make simple and elegant websites in seconds just by dragging and dropping information. But I found out this is not the case and uh, websites have much more to them. To be specific, they have three main components, the database, the backend, and the front end, which all have different roles in ensuring the functionality of a website. When entering the world of web development, I was clueless to this. Uh, I had no comprehension of how to link the front end and the back end and the significance of all three parts of a website. However, after this experience, uh, I'm happy to say I now know the difference between, between them and I'm comfortable with, with, with web development and hope to be working on some more websites soon. And what you can walk away with, I hope this program will allow other STEM students to see the power of code. And even though one could suggest programming is a very robotic activity, uh, the human element comes in how, how it can shape our community and solve the problems of those around us. Uh, programming is difficult, difficult to get a grasp of, honestly. Uh, and no one should feel that no one should feel pressured right away to understand how it works. And personally, due to my uh, computer science class, I had a strong uh, understanding of programming. However, this application took me four hours a day for 60 days. Um, it was not easy to do, but however, being able to see the final product was very rewarding. And I hope many people, many other people would try to take their hand in it. And acknowledgements. Um, it goes without saying, Ms. Bagliani has been an integral part of this project and has helped Roland and I along the way stay on track to get this done. Uh, next, I have to start by saying, I could not have done this project so well without the help of, uh, I received from my internship. During my internship, I worked with a team that focused on web develop, development, and I spent the two months of my internship learning the basics of front-end and back-end development with them, and with their guidance, would use these lessons in my application itself. Uh, so a very special thank you to them for that. And thank, and finally, sorry, uh, a thank you to Roland Neal for working on this project with me, and hopefully we can get this program done and out to Snapchat soon. Thank you.